Does anyone remember the summer of 2012? I know there's that movie, the summer of 1942, but uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you here remember the summer of uh, 2012, if you want to hit the next slide there, uh, the, the derecho, and uh, I know several of us lived through it in Arlington, and gosh, it was only five days of sweltering heat. I mean, have you ever tried to sleep without air conditioning? I really thought I was being tortured. And it's only five days. I mean, look at this chart here in Puerto Rico. I mean, prior to Maria, their longest power outage was eight days, and now they're up to like over 30. Um, so anyhow, definitely driving the interest for microgrids. Next slide. So I thought this would just set the stage in terms of what a microgrid energy storage system is. Basically a small utility system, and uh, you, get, you have all these smart controllers here, this microgrid manager that then allows you to either connect to the larger utility grid or if that goes down, you saw that picture of that Trina power line in the other slide, then it can uh, resort to its own power system. And as uh, consumers start to increasingly become prosumers, we're generating our own power. So just a lot of benefits in terms of microgrids, in terms of energy surety, efficiency, greener power, and more autonomy over your power source. Hey, what a thought. Okay, next slide. So, you're going to hear two panels tonight. What I'm going to do is just give you a bird's eye view. You probably saw it on the website, but uh, just out of courtesy to our speakers here, uh, and to remind you, because uh, I know we have so many things on our mind here, uh, I will just briefly introduce our, our panels. And uh, our, so our first panel is National Perspectives, and our speaker includes Dr. John Caldwell, who is uh, standing there, Director of Economics with Edison Electric Institute. And John heads the Utility Microgrid Task Force. So um, we're going to really kind of get the inside scoop. Scoop. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we have two uh, Department of Defense speakers who will be telling us about how the military is leading the way in innovation. In this area, we will hear from Jack Suresh, Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Army's Office of Installations and Energy, and Robert Hughes, Executive Director for the Air Force Office of Energy Assurance. And all I can say is it's very impressive what the military is doing in microgrids. I saw a Time Magazine article in August. I thought, wow, this topic's going mainstream. And guess what they're talking about? The military. How a third of your installed capacity will be microgrids, or a third of the microgrid installed capacity will be the military by 2020. We will also have Dan Tong, Program Manager for Smart Grid R&D at the US DOE. And he'll present an overview of the department's natural, uh, natural national research and development initiatives in microgrids. Okay, next slide will be uh, regional market perspectives. It's like, hey, what's happening here in DC? So how many of you have actually been to a uh, microgrid site? Okay, okay, that's, that's pretty good. Um, I know it was at the White Flint one with the uh, FDA, our Association of Energy Engineers, took a tour. But hey, John, maybe we need to arrange a tour so the rest of the people can go see a microgrid site and you know, maybe we can arrange something in the future for that. Um, so we're gonna, it's exciting, we're gonna see what's happening right here in the D.C. area. We've got uh, Michael Yambrick, um, Capital Projects Manager of Montgomery County, which is taking a public-private partnership uh, view to financing microgrids. We have Bracken Hendricks, CEO and founder of um, Urban Ingenuity, and uh, they've been working on the Walter Reed, former Walter Reed Medical Center, and as a leading energy partner, so he'll tell us a little bit about that as well as other projects in DC. And we'll hear from Brendan Owens, Chief of Engineering at the US Building Council, and uh, we'll be talking about their peer program, Peer Excellence in Electricity Renewal, which is basically a certification program because a lot of people don't really know what microgrids are. A lot of the states don't really know how to handle it. We'll hear more of that from uh, John Caldwell. So um, our panels will last about 50 minutes each, and each speaker is eight minutes, and we built in time for Q&A. And um, I'll get the next slide. Hey, you know what? You can't do these things without sponsors. So I just want to say thank you to John Caldwell. We'll hear some welcoming remarks from here, him in a bit. He had a wonderful, have a wonderful partner, Annette Oso, Managing Director of Resilient Virginia, that's working to accelerate resiliency planning for Virginia communities. And then we have our environmental leaders, um, ESI um, LLC. You'll be hearing from them. Just a real quick 30-second uh, uh, shout out at the networking se session or maybe when we're changing panels. And then uh, microgrid knowledge as well. So thank you to them and um, we the pizza. Uh, so I hope you're enjoying uh, pizza. Have a nice uh, assortment of uh, flavors and everything. <laughs> Okay, you guys are happy with the pizza. Okay, I know you're really coming for the beer and pizza. Okay, I get it, I get it, okay. 
Um, oh, and uh, gosh, let's see. We have a door prize too, somewhere around here. I had it. I hope it hasn't uh, absconded, but it's a uh, Blackout Book Advance uh, reader copy. We had an event on uh, Blackout in June, so we have a special uh, copy from the publisher. Okay, next one. Real quick here. How am I doing on time? Am I out? Two, three minutes. Okay, hey, three minutes. Okay, great. Uh, so leaders in energy focus areas, what do we do? We're basically connecting leaders around the world to advance clean energy sustainability solutions. And, you know, we've evolved. You know, we kind of started as a LinkedIn group, and we kind of became an LLC, then we kind of became a nonprofit. So it's like, okay, this is good. We're growing. Just a lot of organic growth. And uh, we've all evolved in four areas here. Green jobs. I don't know. How many of you came to our green jobs event in August? Okay, I guess you all have jobs. That's great. <laughs> I'm really delighted. Uh, and then we have uh, Green Finance. We'll have our fourth annual Green Finance event coming up January 2018 to help uh, startups and entrepreneurs working in uh, clean energy to find money. Always a good thing. And then our multi-generational leadership to utilize talent. We'll have our fourth annual Four Generations event on clean energy and sustainable solutions. And the theme is going to be the urgency of now. We want to recognize those leaders here in the D.C. area that are really helping us to move forward, recognize the issue, and are making an impact in all the four generations. So we're looking for a leader from um, Gen X, Millennial, Baby Boomer, World War II traditionalists. So if you know of anyone, we're going to open up our nomination procedure early next week. Then we're going to beat the drum for about a week and a half. And uh, we'll have our great event in Crystal City on December 1, and we hope you can join us. And next slide, I think that is about it. Oh yes, thank you, it takes a small army to conduct these events. We make it seem so effortless. It's just like, you know, you wave a magic wand, but really there are a lot of people uh, behind the scenes. So I would like to ask all our event volunteers to please stand so you can be recognized as well as our board members. Thank you so much, and uh, I think that is about it. Oh, I know, one last slide. We want to thank you, our audience, our attendees. Thank you for supporting our event.